In this video, we're going over how to use the Moto G Stylus for beginners. Hey everyone, thank you for joining us today. If you want to stay up to date on all the mobile technology coming out and learn cool tips, tricks, and hidden features, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and tap the bell to turn on post notifications so you can be alerted every time you post new videos. Today we're going to walk you through how to use your Moto G Stylus and this is a beginner's walkthrough. So let's jump right in. Let's talk about how to use this phone. Now we're going to start with the exterior buttons. So on the left side of the phone, you will find um, a SIM tray, which you would use to put in a memory card or to take out the SIM card for your service. You would use the little tool in the box to pop this out if need be. On the right side, you'll find uh, your volume up and down buttons and your uh, power standby button. So just tapping the button will unlock, will, excuse me, wake up the screen. Tapping it again will put it to sleep. Now once you wake up the phone, if you hold down on the button here, it will take you to this screen where you can simply tap the power off or restart if you do need to restart the phone. You do have a screenshot option and an emergency option as well. At the bottom of the screen, you'll find your headphone jack and you'll find your type C charging port. You can plug in your charger from the box to charge the phone here. And then you'll also find your stylus pen that you can use to write on the screen, navigate and take notes. All right. Now to unlock your phone and get to the main screen, what you'll need to do is put your finger on the screen and slide up. And that's basically how you unlock the phone. Now from this screen, we're gonna talk about how to navigate the phone. Uh, now, one thing you'll notice, and this is if you've ever used uh, an Android phone in the past, normally there are buttons at the bottom of the screen here. Usually a home button, a back button, and a recent apps button. But on this phone, it starts out in what is called gesture mode. So I'm gonna walk you through how to use gesture mode first. And if you decide you don't like gesture mode, I'll show you how to switch back to the traditional buttons to use the phone and navigate that way. So first to use this little um, gesture option. Let's open up an app. So I'm gonna go to Google Chrome, which is where you would go to browse the internet. And if I wanted to go back to the main screen, I would just simply swipe up from the bottom of the screen. So just like this, swipe up, and it will take me back to the home screen. That swipe up gesture will always take you back to your main screen. That's how that works. Now, if you wanted to see all the apps that are running on your phone, you would swipe up, but you would keep your finger on the screen. It's more of a drag up instead of a swipe up because a swipe is swiping and then letting your finger go. With the uh, recent apps, you will need to put your finger on the bottom of the phone and slide up and hold. And this takes you to your recent apps. And now I can see all the different apps that are currently running on the phone. So, once again, just drag up and hold, and that's how you can get to your recent apps. And then for the back button, let me walk you through how that works. So slide down from the top of your screen, swipe down again, and tap on the settings wheel here. I'm just gonna go to the settings and show you if you wanted to go back a step, how that works. So if you wanna go back a step, you have to start off of the screen on the left side here and just swipe in and that will take you back one step, and then you can swipe in again, and then it will take you back another step, which would take us to our home screen. So for a lot of people, they don't like this, and they'd rather just have the traditional buttons, so let me show you how to get those buttons back. We're gonna swipe down from the screen, swipe down again, go back to our settings, and swipe up, and go to System, and then Gestures, system navigation and tap on three button navigation. This will get the traditional buttons on the phone. And now I have a home button, a recent apps button and a back button for easier navigation. So it's up to you. I would encourage you if you are more familiar with Android, try out the gestures and see if you can get comfortable with it. If not, now you know how to switch back to the traditional setup with the buttons. So now that we've gone over how to navigate the screen, next we're gonna go over what's called your notification panel. So at the top of the screen, we're gonna swipe down. 
And in this section, you'll find all the notifications that come through your phone. For example, you receive a text message, it'll show up in this section. You receive an email, you'll have a notification. If you've downloaded uh, other various apps, the way they communicate with you is all through the notification panel. So you'll wanna check this frequently to see if you have new messages. And if there's something you want to check further, you just tap on whatever the message is. You would tap it and then it'll take you to that application to follow up on that message. So aside from, from the different messages or notifications, you have what are called your switches. Now these switches control various functions on the phone. Uh, one of the most important functions is your Wi-Fi. So I'm gonna show you how to use that in a second. So when you swipe down initially, you'll have these first six switches you'll see, but if you swipe down again, you'll have more switches. And if you swipe to your left, you have another page of options. So airplane mode, night light, system update. These are all just built-in uh, shortcuts to these important functions on your phone. Now, let's say you wanna to connect to Wi-Fi or even just turn your Wi-Fi on, you have to hit this switch. So if I tap it and it's not lit up in blue, this means that Wi-Fi is turned off. If I tap it again and it's blue, it means Wi-Fi is now turned on. And then if I wanna to connect to a Wi-Fi network, I'm gonna hold down this button. So press and hold and it will take me to the Wi-Fi section in the settings. Now I can look for whatever network I'm trying to connect to and then enter my password. Let's try it right now. Uh, I'm looking for the network that's called Netgear. So I'm gonna tap on Netgear and here it prompts me to put in a password. So I'm gonna type in the password for my network. Now once you put in that code, you'll tap the connect button and then you wanna check to make sure under your network it says connected and you'll also see a little Wi-Fi symbol right here in the corner, and that's how you'll know you are connected to a Wi-Fi network. So just to show you, this is why these switches up top are so important, because these switches control, again, a lot of important functions. Let's say, for example, you wanted to connect to your Bluetooth headphones. Same thing, you would hold down on this little Bluetooth icon and make sure you find your Bluetooth headphones in the, in the options and then connect to it. So this just makes it easier for you to find these functions that tend to be buried in the settings menu so they're right in front of you and easy to access. All right, so now we've, we've gone over navigating the phone, where your messages are gonna come through. Now next, I wanna talk about your apps. Where do I find all the applications on my phone? Well, all you're gonna need to do is simply swipe up and this will take you to what's called your app drawer. This is where you'll find all of the apps that are on your phone. If you download a new app, you'll find it in this section as well as everything else that is already on your phone. So just by swiping up, you can see all the different apps here. And again, whenever new apps are downloaded, they will show up in this section. Now, you're probably saying to yourself, well, how do I download an app? Or maybe you're saying, what's an app? Let me go over that. Well, if you ever use the computer, uh, computers use what are called programs. Phones use applications. An application is just a computer version of a program. So phones use applications and uh, apps is short for application. So that's essentially what an app is in case you were wondering. Now to download an app, you need to go to the Play Store. So we're gonna tap on this little white icon with the play button. Now, before you're able to download any apps on your phone, you will need to input a Gmail account or a Google account. So we're gonna tap sign in. Now, if you're saying to yourself, I don't have a Gmail or a Google account, I have a Yahoo or an AOL or a Verizon, whatever that is, then you'll have an option here to create an account. You would tap here, enter your information, and they will set up a Google account for you. However, if you already have a Google account, you simply just need to enter your email address. Let's do that now. We're gonna tap in the box, a keyboard will come up, and then we can type in our email address and our password. Okay, so we've entered our email address and password, and now we're gonna hit I agree. One more prompt will come up, we're also gonna accept that, and then it will take us to the Google Play Store. And here you'll be able to download just about anything you would need for your phone. So games, apps, movies and TV shows, and books.
to search for anything, you just simply tap in the box at the top here and you can type in the name of whatever you're trying to search for to download. Let's say you wanted to download a solitaire game. You would just type in solitaire or start typing it in and it will begin to recommend games or options. I'm gonna tap on the first option here and then I'll tap solitaire. Like this one looks like a good one, so I'll tap here. Now, this green box here that says install, this tells you that it is a free application. If this said a price, then that's how you know it's not free. You'll need to make sure that that's the one that you want before you download it. If I wanna install this solitaire app, I'm just gonna tap the install button and it will begin to download that application on the phone. Now, once it finishes downloading, I'm gonna go back home, swipe up, and let me do that right now. And my new application should show up in this menu because again, this is where all your games and applications are gonna show up on the phone. And there we have it, a new solitaire game. It is right here, there's our new solitaire game. We'll tap on that. And now we can quickly begin playing our fun new solitaire game. Okay, so that's how you download applications. And the next thing I wanna show you is how to set up your fingerprint scanner so you can program or set. Next, I'm gonna show you how to program your fingerprint so you can unlock your phone with your finger. You're gonna swipe down from the top Swipe down again, go back to that settings wheel. Look for the option that says security. Tap on fingerprint. And then you will need to select a backup option in the event your fingerprint scanner isn't working. So we're gonna do a pin, so fingerprint plus pin, and enter a four digit pin code. Now, once you have confirmed your pin code, we're going to then go to this screen for setup. Take your phone, flip it over, put your finger on the fingerprint scanner, and just simply lift and press and try to put your finger on different sections of the fingerprint scanner so it can fully read your finger. And you have an option afterward to add another finger if you want to program multiple fingers uh, for security. I don't at this time, so I'm going to hit done. And now we're all set. I can now unlock the phone using the fingerprint scanner. Now the last thing we're going to go over is simply um, some of the other important things you would need to know. So your camera is down here. Simply tap here if you want to take a picture. And if you wanna look at your pictures after you take them, you're gonna to go to the Google Photos app, and this is where you'll see all the pictures that you've taken on the phone. This is your text messaging app. You would use this to send text messages, and this is your phone app. Now, if we tap on the phone icon, tap on this keypad right here in blue, this will bring up the number pad, and then you can type in a phone number, tap the green button to make a phone call. And that's it guys, this has been the basics on how to use the Moto G Stylus. Now, if you wanna learn more, because again, we just went over a lot of the basics in this video. If you wanna take your knowledge to the next level, check out this video right here, and this video right here. You'll learn some great tips and tricks, as well as some great hidden features that will take your knowledge again to the next level. We hope you guys found this helpful. Make sure you like, favorite, and share if it was helpful. Hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more videos. Take care and as always, have a good one.